Before history is written, it's played. Before it's frozen in time, it's fought one shift at a time. Before it's etched in silver, it's carved in ice. What happens next will last forever. The Stanley Cup Final on ABC and ESPN Plus begins Saturday. Thanks for choosing this free Anfield Index podcast. If you'd prefer to listen to this or any of our other shows without adverts, then now's the time to check out Anfield Index Pro. With AI Pro, you can supercharge your entire listening experience. You'll not only get all of our podcasts without the ads, but you'll have them far faster with our quick publish feature available exclusively for subscribers. AI Pro also puts you in the heart of our sound studio with an option to listen to many of our shows live and interact with the podcasters in real time as the shows are recording. Upgrading couldn't be easier. AI Pro is available on all popular podcast platforms and we have our own apps for Apple and Android. Just head on over to AnfieldIndexPro.com and get started today. Hello and welcome to the Daily Red, your lunchtime catch-up on all things Liverpool FC on a Monday on which the only thing of importance is that legendary Liverpool defender Alan Hansen is in hospital uh, in a serious condition. We have no further news on what that condition may be. The club announced yesterday that he was in hospital, but they didn't go into detail. Video has emerged of him at Anfield in late May, looking in good health. So it doesn't appear like it's anything that's been long-term, likely something more sudden. Not to speculate, we'll probably find out in time, but I'm sure we will all be sending all of our best wishes to one of the best to ever wear the jersey. Uh, Alan Hansen arrived at Liverpool in the summer of 1977 as a skinny 22-year-old from Partick Thistle. The fact that Alan Hansen was even a professional footballer is a near miracle because he didn't want to be a professional footballer. He wanted to be a professional golfer and actually gave up playing football for multiple years in his teens, uh, turned down a professional contract with Hibernian because he wanted to pursue golf. Uh, But eventually he decided that playing football was just going to have to do. And he went on to become one of the greatest centre-backs that Britain ever produced. Uh, certainly the best that Scotland ever produced. In his pomp, he was one of, if not the best centre-backs in the world. Played for Liverpool from 1977 to 1991. 434 appearances, 8 goals, and he won everything there was to win. You're looking at a guy with 8 league titles, 2 FA Cups, 4 League Cups, 3 European Cups, and a UEFA Super Cup. He was in the PFA Team of the Year six times. He was elected the English Football Hall of Fame in 2006 and the Scottish Football Hall of Fame in 2007. He does not have the international resume that lines up with the ability that he had, in part because back then, Liverpool were quite similar to how Manchester United had been towards the international uh, scenario with with Ferguson, where if a player had a knock or a niggle, they'd pull out of the squad. We saw it with Ryan Giggs for, what, 20 years with the Welsh national team, where any time it was a friendly or a game of less importance, Ryan Giggs wouldn't play. So you've got Ryan Giggs playing for Wales for 16 years and only earning 64 caps. Uh, Likewise with Hanson, he played for the Scottish national team for eight years and only won 26 caps. Um, Obviously then he moved into punditry, decided he had no interest in managing or coaching, despite the fact that when Kenny left the first time, Hanson was expected to be the successor, but didn't have any interest, so Graham Souness came in, and we all know how that went. Hansen would retire and move into the the punditry field. And for my money, he is still the best pundit that I've seen 
over the last 30 years. Um, his ability to actually analyze defensive play, defensive flaws, errors, it was just a code above anything that we see now. And obviously he became known for, you know, diabolical and shocking and things like that. And he's probably well known, best known to many who maybe are too young to remember his punditry for the line, you'll never win anything with kids, which he said after United had been beaten 3-1 on the opening day of the 95-96 season and then went on to win the double. But the thing is, people make out that he was wrong when he said that. But he wasn't wrong at all. He really wasn't wrong at all. Look at the United squad from 95-96. Peter Schmeichel played 45 games. Dennis Irwin, 39. Steve Bruce, 39. Lee Sharp, who by then had been in and around the first team for five or six years, he played 41. Gary Pallister, 38. Sorry, 28. Uh, Cantona, 38. Brian McClare, 23. These are all older players. Andy Cole, 44 games. Roy Keane was, you know, maybe 24 at the time, the end of that season, I think. He played 39 games. Uh, you've got a bunch of young players who did play, obviously. Gary Neville, Nicky Butt, Paul Scholes, David Beckham and Phil Neville. They did all play a lot, but the core of that group were those senior players who'd already won two league titles in 92-93 and 93-94. And like Paul Parker only played 10 games that season, but he was still there in and around the squad. So in that defensive line, you were only adding Gary Neville for Paul Parker. Irwin was still there. Bruce and Pallister were still there. David May would step in at centre-back for Pallister. He was a bit older. David May would have been, what, mid-20s at that point? Yeah, he was 25 at the start of that season. Phil Neville would play in in place of his brother or he'd play in place of Irwin when Irwin needed a rest. But he wasn't a regular in the team. In midfield, Beckham came in for Kinchelskis. But Scholes was only a bit part player. 16 starts in the League 18 in all competitions. Giggs was already established on the left wing, even though he was young. He'd been in the team for three or four years at that point. And then up front, it was Cantona and Cole. So while people have always used that as a rod to beat Alan Hansen with, he was right. They didn't win those things because of the kids. They won them because of the experienced players. Look at who's getting the goals. Cantona, 19. Giggs, who, like I say, three or four years into the team, 12. Uh, Cole 13 Skulls contributed massively with 14 and, and Beckham to be fair got 8 Lee Sharp got 6 but the primary goal scorers were the guys that had been there for years Skulls and Beckham were the only young players to score a decent amount of goals that year um, and even in the cup final which they beat us in obviously it's Cantona that gets the goal in the semi-final Cole and Beckham, to be fair. In the in the quarterfinals, it's Cantona and Sharp. The round before, it's Cantona and Sharp. The round before, it's Giggs, Parker and Cantona. Like, it was the senior players that won them. Those trophies that year. But yet, nobody let Alan Hansen forget about it. But if you watch the class of 92, the players admit it. Hansen was right. It was the senior players that were so important. If it had been a team of youngsters, they would have won nothing. Hansen was brilliant at whatever he turned his hand to. He was a ball-playing centre-back, but he could man-mark anybody. And he could just put them in a straight jacket and they weren't getting any change out of him. His ability to carry the ball from defence through the midfield and into the final third we we think we think of Joel Matip doing that now and how good he was at it. Hansen was on a completely different level in the seventies and eighties, playing on pitches that now players like players in League Two would refuse to play on. 
pitches that resemble Sunday league pitches now. I mean, like bad Sunday league pitches, not even good ones. Hansen was doing that when the rules allowed much, much more physical tackling. And he was just dancing through midfield, chopping tackles, coming in, little drop of the shoulder, little burst of pace, and he was away. Brilliant at all aspects. Good in the air. Comfortable passer. Just no flaws to his game. Absolutely no flaws to his game. And then, like I say, as a pundit, <clears throat> he was phenomenally Absolutely phenomenal. And could still be doing it to this day at a higher level than what we're currently served up. They're not even close. He decided to retire from punditry in 2014. So he's been gone 10 years. He was only 58 at that point. He was outstanding. Uh, he covered six, 16 FA Cup finals, six World Cups, five European Championships, and one Olympics with the BBC. It's a fair effort. <clears throat> and when you look at controversies, think of someone being on television that long. 22 years. Every word they say. And I also remember writing for the Telegraph and somebody else. Every word they say been microanalyzed. And there's only two controversies listed here for Alan Hansen. So one of them is very unfortunate. So... He was commentating on the Argentina-Romania game at the 1994 World Cup. One of the Argentine defenders made a mistake and Hansen said that he warrants shooting. He, the Argentine defender warrants shooting for a mistake like that. The unfortunate thing here was that Andreas Escobar, the Colombian defender, had been shot and killed uh, the day before having returned home to Colombia after they went out in the group stage and he'd scored the own goal and eliminated them. So obviously, public apology has to be um, has to be put out there for that. And then, in December two thousand and eleven, he used the word "coloured" twice in reference to black footballers. Now, obviously, that got a fair amount of, of criticism, and I think absolutely fair is fair. Um, some people did try and make some excuses uh, by pointing out that the the delicious ice cold taste of Dr. Pepper has a lasting effect on people. Lindsay from Sacramento said, pro tip, 40 degrees is the perfect temperature for an ice cold Dr. Pepper. Why is 40 degrees the perfect temperature for Dr. Pepper? We brought in Sue from Duluth, Minnesota to tell us. Oh yeah, I know a thing or two about cold. Oh, that right there is the perfect kind of ice cold for Dr. Pepper. Mm, I'd share that with my friend Nancy. She likes Dr. Pepper, too, you know. My cold All right, that'll be all, Sue. Having a perfect temperature for your Dr. Pepper, it's a pepper thing. Inspired by real fan posts. Primary organization for the advancement of, you know, black people's rights in America is called the NAACP, which is for colored people. And Hansen was not among them. Hansen immediately apologized unreservedly, made it clear that he did not mean to cause any offence and that he was deeply regretful of his use of the word. So, like, you know, immediately owning up to his mistake, which is very, very fair. Um, yeah, we, we can just hope that he makes a full recovery and a speedy recovery. Uh, one of the, the genuine greats. And if you're picking an all-time Liverpool eleven, and he's not in it, your all-time Liverpool eleven is wrong. The centre-backs in an all-time Liverpool eleven are Virgil van Dijk and him. There's other great ones, Phil Thompson, Mark Lawrenson. Both of them played with Hansen. <clears throat> Both of them will tell you he was better than them. Tommy Smith, he would have played with Hansen at the end of his career, the beginning of, of Hansen's Liverpool career. I'm sure he would have said the same thing. Ron Yates, whoever you want to name, he's... He's the guy. He's the guy. Him and Virgil are the two. Trent is the right back and Emlyn Hughes is probably the left back because you have to get Emlyn Hughes into the team. This is one of the greats. And if you are the type who does say a prayer, say a prayer for Alan Hansen. 
Right, <clears throat> let's move on. Um, we have some key dates for Liverpool this summer uh, with regards to pre-season and such. So, June 14th, the transfer window opens. Um, then it will close on the 30th of August. Uh, June 14th is also the day that Euro 2024 begins. June the 18th is the day we will get the Premier League fixtures for the season. So we'll get to figure out when we play our rivals. The Copa America begins on the 21st of June, a week after the Euros. And then the final of the Copa technically is the same day, but in the UK and Europe, it will be technically the day. It'll be the day after because it'll be 1 a.m. on the morning of June the 15th. Sorry, July the 15th. It'll be July the 14th in um, in America where the competition is being held. And obviously the final of the Euros is also uh, July 14th. Pre-season will begin on July the 1st. We play Real Betis in a friendly on the 27th. We play Arsenal in a friendly on the 1st of August. We play United in a friendly on the 4th of August. And then on the 17th, the Premier League will begin again. So, fingers crossed, we get a decent start to the season and uh, it all becomes a little bit easier for Arnie Slot to make the transition. Uh, what else is here on This Is Anfield today? Uh, there's a piece about Dominic, which is very, very good. Um piece about Robertson. Um, Adrian expected to reject Liverpool contract offer. Could force transfer plans. Uh, fingers crossed. He, he, he moves on and, you know, I think it's, I think it's time uh, for him to move on be fair. Uh, what else do we have here? Uh, manager booed and facing sack calls despite Liverpool strikers silver line and that's Rob Page with the Welsh national team. Uh, Ginny Wijnaldum has said that he trained with Feyenoord while Arnie Slot was there when he was trying to recover fitness I think before he went to Aletifac and he has said that in his opinion, as a trainer, he's on the same level as Klopp and Mourinho, who he worked with when he was unknown at Roma. So that's interesting to hear. Um, let's see. Manager who lost 11-2 to Liverpool is now replacing Arnie Slot. So that is Brian Priske, who was at Sparta Pride, and obviously we played them in the Europa League this past, this past season. Did enjoy how his team played. They were quite aggressive. They were brave. And I thought it was um, quite admirable the way they went about the business, even though, you know, ultimately it was a, a fool's error. But they were losing either way. They were losing either way. You might as well go out playing your own way as go out being a coward. I mean, look at Arsenal this past season. They lose the title because they didn't win at the Etihad. They took the draw. They set up, parked the bus. So had they gone there and gotten beaten, the season end is the same for them. But at least they would have given themselves a chance to win the game, uh, which they didn't do. Uh, Five Liverpool loan players who could be given a chance under any slot. Fabio Carvalho, not for me. Tyler Morton, not for me. Owen Beck, not for me. Luke Chambers, in time, I think so. Uh, and Vitislav Yaros, I-, I think, should be the one who steps in for Cuevin Kelleher. Uh, let's move on to Liverpool.com and see what the lads there have for us. Hopefully nothing uh, with Jonathan Morley's name on it because um, I just the irrational anger that it brings me. Um, there's a piece about Alan Hansen and the tributes that have been uh, been sent out by, you know, former teammates, former colleagues, those who know him. Uh, Graham Sudes nearly crashed car after what Martin Keown said about Alan Hansen. 
we'll come back to that. Um, the speech with Alan Hansen's family. Liverpool tra transfer news. Florian Vert's terms agreed. And the Incuba Minta stance. We'll come back to that. Piece about Diaz. Uh, Florian Vert's agent already gave Liverpool clear transfer me message as Real Madrid agrees terms. Liverpool wants shock, shock swap for Rodrigo as Arsenal could set up 63 million transfer battle. We'll have a look at that. Another piece on Florian Verts. Um There's a piece about what shirt numbers are available uh, this summer for any incomings or players looking to maybe change their number. Now let's see. Graham Souness called into TalkSport to take issue with Martin Keown after the former Arsenal defender's verdict on Hansen and Lawrence. Graham Souness claimed he almost crashed his car just while listening to Martin Keown discussing his former teammates. Keown was scrutinising the impact of the back pass rule on a 2021 TalkSport broadcast and maintained it significantly elevated the game due to players like Alan Hansen and Mark Lawrenson formerly exploiting it by feeding the ball back to goalkeeper Bruce Grobelar. This prompted an irate Sooness, who was part of the team with Hansen and Lawrenson, to confront Keown over the phone. Um, it was utter nonsense. I do remember this going round at the time. It was utter nonsense. Uh, it was something that Liverpool would do, pass the ball back to the goalkeeper to maintain possession. But, I mean... Those two were incredible ball playing centre backs, absolutely incredible, and they would only use the goalkeeper as an out ball. We see centre backs do that now. The only difference is goalkeepers now can pick the ball up, but it hasn't changed how defenders operate. It hasn't changed that at all. Um, Keown himself was obviously a good defender, but wasn't really good in the ball. Uh, let's see. Right, so there's chat about Florian Verts. I, I don't, I don't know. Maybe, maybe. Uh, according to the Liverpool Echo, Liverpool has no interest in signing Yankuba Minta. Um, I mean, who's the who's the journalist? It, actually, to be fair, it doesn't really matter. It doesn't really matter whether it's Gorst or... Du yeah, it's Doyle. I mean, they're both dreadful. So why would anyone listen to anything they have to say? Uh, Costa Simicus has been linked with an exit and Florian Verts is a uh, top target for well, every club in Europe with any ambition and a bit of money, to be fair. Uh, da, da, da. So, yeah, we apparently... Oh, would this be Trent? Yeah, Trent for Rodrigo. Um, it all depends on whether Trent wants to sign a new contract. If he doesn't, I'd do that deal tomorrow. If he does, then no, but I'd still try and buy Rodrigo. Uh, and then apparently we are going to go head-to-head -head with Arsenal for Douglas Louise. And according to this nonsense, which is from the Mirror, uh, Villa won 50 million. <clears throat> Funny, in January they wanted 70. I don't see that going down. Um, I can't imagine we would have any interest in signing Douglas Louise. He's a good player, but he's not what we need at all and would be utterly redundant with Alex McAllister already in the team. Unless Alexis is going to play as the 10, but in that case, there's better options out there than Douglas Louise. Um, Romano talking nonsense. More about Minta. Uh, Liverpool forced to reconsider transfer plans after late, latest injury concern. Louis van Gaal has spoken glowingly about Arnie Slough. Um, Reds hold talks over 60 million deal to sign the next Xavi Alonso. That is Xavi Alonso, uh, Javier Mascarano. What am I doing? Uh, that is Alan Varela there. As uh, a piece about. Uh, Johan Bakayoko, who we should not sign. 
There was a piece about Yaros. There was a piece about Hansen. A piece about Diogo Jota. Uh, how to watch Liverpool. Seven Liverpool transfer targets. Um, well, I'm not sure the person that wrote this knows who any of our transfer targets would be. But, you know. Uh, Liverpool transfer blow is key target. Agrees terms with Newcastle and it's James Trafford who's likely not a target at all. Uh, Real Madrid in the driving seat to sign Florian Wirtz. I mean, we're not going to sign Wirtz, so... It, it doesn't really matter. I mean, it'd be great if we could, but we're just not going to. Um, piece about Minta on Anfield Index. A piece about uh, what Ginny had to say uh, regarding Arnie Slot. A piece about Diaz, uh, James Jimbo, Jim Bob Pierce talking about FSG. Um piece about Edison. And then podcast-wise, there is the latest scouted, which is players to watch. We pick one player each from every squad at the Euros, myself and Carl. Um, then there is um, a piece, a, a, an article from the, or a, a podcast from the EPL Index side with um, Dave Davis. And there is the New Media Matters, which is Dave Davis and David Lynch having themselves a chat about uh, the latest rumours and just why things are kind of quiet at the time. Uh, that's it, folks. I will see you all tomorrow. Take care of yourselves. Bye-bye. We hope you enjoyed listening to this Anfield Index show. Please be sure to subscribe to our channel so future podcasts find their way to your device automatically there's nothing quite like fan engagement and we'd love to know what you think of anything discussed on this show the best way to get in touch is over on our free discord community where both podcasters and listeners debate the hottest lfc topics 24 7 sign up free now at anfieldindex.com forward slash discord you won't regret it you can also follow us on twitter at anfield index and find us on facebook by searching for anfield index Oh, and before you go, we'd love it if you could leave us a five-star review on your favourite podcast app. It only takes a couple of seconds, and it means the world to the people who create these free shows. Sports Social Podcast Network. This podcast is sponsored by Ramp. Are you the decision maker in your company? Consider this. For the first time in decades, there's a better option for a corporate card and spend management platform. Meet Ramp, the only corporate card and spend management system designed to help you spend less money so you can make more. Most corporate credit cards offer points as incentives, but those points amount to less than their worth in real cash value. Ramp's business cards offer you cash back, real money in your pocket. Plus, you control who spends what with each vendor. And Ramp software collects and verifies receipts automatically, which means you'll stop wasteful spending and close your books in hours instead of days. Businesses that use Ramp add up to 5% to their bottom line the first year. If you're a decision maker, adding Ramp could be one of the best decisions you've ever made. And now get $250 when you join Ramp for free. Just go to ramp.com slash easy. Ramp.com slash easy. R-A-M-P dot com slash easy. Currents issued by Sutton Bank and Celtic Bank members of DIC terms and conditions apply.